I thought that changing patterns of consumption of myself as an individual would lead to a uh, dramatic lowering of my footprint on the planet. That kind of things, if you change out your, uh, your tungsten light bulbs with fluorescent light bulbs and compact fluorescent light bulbs and you recycle, things like that. It, it seemed for a long time for people in my generation that if enough of us did that it would make a significant and important change. What we've discovered is that sadly that's not true at all. Those things are important, but what it's really going to take to change the path that we're on is political action. Hi, my name is Luke Zeller. I'm Ryan Porter. And I'm Caleb Parkins. The purpose of this project, which is made for a C-SPAN student camp contest, is to inform the general public more about climate change and how pressing of an issue it is. Climate change is the effect of greenhouse gases on our atmosphere. What are greenhouse gases? Uh, what greenhouse gases serve to do is they uh, trap heat closer to the surface of the planet at the expense of the higher atmosphere. So as the sun's rays come in and warm the earth um, with higher greenhouse gas concentrations, less of that energy makes it out to space in its first trip. And that results in the lower atmosphere, especially the surface where we live, uh, getting warmer over time. Uh, the National Climatic Data Center, or NCDC, is where all of the weather data that we see on the evening news goes to retire and live in active retirement. Global warming is primarily caused from the fact that we're burning fossil fuels to generate our energy sources. And in this area, our electricity is primarily produced from burning coal, and uh, we're producing tons of carbon dioxide. Of all the weather variables kind of associated with climate change, the two most confident um, trends, and this is no coincidence that these are also the things that we observe the best, are we're seeing more and more instances of big heat, really unusual heat for a place for a particular time of year. Um, that is clearly going up. So, uh, and then the second most um, confident assessment based on the data is big rain. So we're seeing more and more of these uh, large rainfall events and the, the connection with, with a warmer climate is that a warmer atmosphere can hold more water vapor. If we do not recognize the need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and to prepare our infrastructure for climate change, future superstorms will be even more damaging than Hurricane Sandy. It's a case of out of sight, out of mind. If the problem isn't staring you in the face every day, then people tend not to think about it. And lots of people in our country don't understand that our power comes from destroying other people's communities. Mountaintop removal uh, takes explosives and essentially blasts the top three to 500 feet off of a mountain to get the coal seams underneath. After that's done, the, uh, the land is ruined not just for the short term, but for generations really, maybe for even thousands of years. It results in uh, poisoned streams, poisoned air, higher cancer rates, and uh, devastated communities. I don't think you can really look at global warming in isolation. You really need to understand it as being a, a critical effect of the ways in which we've designed many of our systems that need to be redesigned, taking into account the necessity of integrating with the ecological flows of the planet. I think it's just going to take our government standing um, strong enough to say uh, to producers of carbon that you are going to have to start being accountable for um, your carbon footprint.
And so I think when we talk about climate change, it's really important to bring it down to people's lives and to help them to understand that it's already having a huge impact on all kinds of global systems and to really help them to understand it in a relatable way. It's really important because it's going to affect every way that we design our energy systems, the way we design our housing systems, the way we design our cities. And so it's one of those things that's one of many factors that we really need to be taking into account as we look to the future. We're going to have to confront the industries that keep polluting the atmosphere, and that means the fossil fuel industries, natural gas, coal, and oil companies. Uh, it's the, the goodwill of the majority of the people is, is not going to be enough. It's going to take um, systemic change in how our economy works and where we get our energy from. So to me, the immediate solution is to reduce um, energy use in the first place through conservation and efficiency and then to meet that demand through cleaner more renewable technologies so it's generally accepted that change is needed but what is this change i really think it's important for people to start moving even beyond just the concern with climate change and even just individual behavior but starting to look at the whole system's design of how it is that we're thinking about human civilization in this area solar is uh, the most potentially viable renewable energy. It is, uh, you know, technology that's ready to go now. The price uh, point is dropping and becoming definitely more economically feasible. And the sun has been the primary energy source for every life-sustaining system on this planet. Nothing is more important than the response that we're going to make in the next, not 10 years, but in the next 12 months, really, to um, this pressing issue and the, the message we deliver to Congress and to President Obama has to be you people have to take action now.